Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time, it's a component bridge. B522. By Wayne Kerr. This is a huge component bridge, as you can see here. This one is a little bit special. Look at the ranges. I have never ever seen anything like this before. So look at that. Times 10 kilo Henry. And the readout can go to 500. So 500 times 10 kilo henry how about that <laughs> i haven't yet figured out exactly how to use it but i think down here is the resistance or impedance when you, when you have an a reactive component and then you want to figure out the uh, the loss component i guess and we got uh, two different readouts i still haven't yet figured all that out and um, that will be the two bnc connectors for your test object and it's really nicely explained here on this little schematic here so that will be the two grounds from the two BNC connectors that goes together, right? And I tested with my ohm meter. There is no connection between these two at all. So it is really a true four point measurement. So that is uh, also good to know. So I think I will try and uh, play with that. It is uh, from the 60s or 70s, really, really old kind of unit I found some information online and it says this one is a known as a transformer ratio arm bridge whatever that is that is something I need to look up and figure out what that is also I found a manual a three page manual and I will try and show you guys the a little snip in here so you can see what it's all about the the main ranges is from one pico farad to five farads one micro henry to 500 kilo henry and resistance is one milli ohm to 1000 mega ohm that is a huge range and i think the idea is that we need to trim for a maximum or a minimum or something like that on this meter. And then we know we are at the correct um, peak, right? For some reason, there's a frequency doubler in here. So we can, we can run on line frequency or times two. So why do you want to change between 50 or 100 hertz? That is not a whole lot of difference. I don't understand exactly why that is a good thing. And it should use about 10 watts, it says in the in the manual. So uh, I think I just uh, want to try and plug it in and see what happens, really. It shouldn't contain anything that could blow up. So I might as well just go for it, right? So here is the power entry. Why is it made like this? And like you see here, this is the old English Bulgin connector, the three pin. And this is good for uh, chassis uh, grounding. And of course, I got the mating part on my special mains cable stuck. So that is good. Voltage selector is made using a novel tube socket 
Well, let me see if I can show you. Can you see the... See, that is a <laughs> tube socket. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really nice. Beautiful, beautiful. There's a case inside the case. And it looks like, see, it's a little bit loose or something like that, right? And uh, I got another funny box here and here. And we got the bulbs. So we got two bulbs on the left side and two bulbs at the right side. And when I change the measurement ranges, probably see here, right? Then it nicely indicate which scale to use on the dials. So all that is pretty nice. But see, there's another bulb right here at the bottom. Maybe that one is the reason why nothing works. So I'll try to measure if this one is working. I don't have any schematics at all. So I am a little bit lost about the whole working principle. And if you don't understand the working principle of a unit, I mean, it is a little bit difficult to measure around and debug stuff and uh, figuring out what is really going on. It's actually, I did not expect to find that much stuff in here. We've got a little rectifier, resistors, capacitors, so that's a little power supply. And over here we got three three transistors, some filters, some amplifiers, and see again, um, some diodes driving the meter. Current transformer. This is probably a better view. Uh, this one is a current transformer. Well, look at all those wires going into the... Why is it just out of focus? Annoying. Hmm. Ah, so that's different tappings, different uh, depending on the the ranges, right? And then the output from that transformer goes to the amplifier. There isn't really a lot of other stuff going to that amplifier. Interesting. We got some calibration of this and that, and no indication. What are you doing? So what is this thing doing? Ah, there's a label on that side. Look at that potentiometer here. 10,000 ohms. <laughs> Lovely. So without any schematics or anything, I'm just going to um, have a little look around and see if I can actually figure something out. So this is, of course, the power supply. And we've got some low voltage AC inputs and those are obviously driving the bulbs and then we have a little rectifier unregulated power supply some filter resistors and the and the capacitors here it says 12 volts so we already got a lot of information we can use I measure about 11 volts so I don't think it is directly wrong it is just a little bit low it shouldn't affect what I see so that will be the switches for all the different ranges for the bridges and uh, all that kind of funny stuff. And the circuit board here is just a three-stage amplifier. That will be the input from the current transformer. And then we just have a little over-driving protection, I guess. It could also be some sort of a rectifier, but I think the amplifiers, they run on AC. And um, I think this circuit board here actually works because this is driving the meter and I do see meter readings. And uh, I put my scope, as you can see here, on the input to this board. And here is the input to that board. And now I dial 
I don't know if you can see that. And I see no peaks. And if I try the different ranges, I get a little bit more signal. And again, no peaks. I try to go in another label. See? And I crank these dials all the way around. See? No peaks at all. And I try all that. Oh, that is reflective. And I try all the different uh, ranges and all the different this and that. And there's another funny thing I can show you. This is the line frequency, also the test frequency. And if I put this two times two, bing, and then it goes double. There's some funny clipping here. I don't exactly why it's doing that. There's another proof. That there's definitely something wrong with the complete a bridge circuit that will be the calibration resistors and uh, like you can see here no matter what I do here no response whatso whatsoever right I mean it is just as dead as it can be and I still can't can't figure out where the heck is the component that is shorted or not connected or something like that that will be all the Bridge settings. We got some resistors down there and a little capacitor here. And uh, where is the problem? Not that easy today. So that will be the current transformer casing. A thick case for that, huh? And the transformer is kind of put into paraffin or something like that. See, if you touch this, so that is some sticky paraffin. <laughs> Pretty cute. I think this is the measurement reference capacitor. It was right there. And uh, it really looks like somebody else tried to debug this a few times. All the soldering and desoldering and all that kind of stuff here. And we see little thin parts sticking out in all directions, creating all sorts of shorts, and I don't know what. Maybe that is um, see? responsible for the problems and melted wires and short stuff around here. And uh, also we see all the cracks in these capacitors. And then you can, of course, get moisture in there and damage the capacitor part these are really really good low leakage super stable and all that kind of stuff and it says here a hundred thousand picofarads so that will be a 100 nano so i'll just try and find another one and plug in whatever type you know just to see if i can get a peak so i don't know was it the capacitor or was it me uh, fooling around in that area with the capacitor the fun thing is that I tried to measure this one and now it works. So was it just the soldering around this area or was it because something was shorted? Uh, I really don't know, but you know what? I got good news. Ha <laughs> ha. So it's still my 2.2 um, microfarad capacitor and uh, I still have it mounted between the two inner connectors and all that. And uh, that is range six. So it is times one in microfarads all right so let's look at the meter here and we got a little bit of reflection problems here let me see if i can show this a little bit better see what is going on i clearly got a nice nice peak so if you put the value here a little bit away from the peak and then play around with the this is the impedance and, but I think this is a parallel impedance because it's, of course, over the capacitor, right? So this is not serious, but this is parallel. So, of course, that should be high as possible, right? So, le again, let's look at the meter up here. Now I try and dial this. See? It gets up. and I want to aim for the lowest reading, and that is... When this one is highest and this is exactly what i would expect of this capacitor right 
and then I, I can of course go for the peak here S up see there's a very violent peak here I mean and it says 2.543 2.3 microfarads let's see if that is uh, right so here we go this is my 2.2 is what it says but in reality it is 2.3 ha ha and I have of course chosen to go in parallel here and that is very high uh, 400 kilo ohms if we look at the readout range here I think this is in kilo ohms as well right see up here is 100 kilo ohms so this could be whatever it is just over the capability of this unit right So I'm trying with an inductor and this is just so funny and really really cool to work with. I'm so so excited about the different ranges and uh, all the stuff that I'm doing here. It just really really works. So this is a 7.5 millihenry and now you need to pay a strict attention to the way that stuff is connected and now in number three See, times 10 milli, and it's also the same here, times 1 in ohms. Okay, fantastic. So let's go here. And look at the peak. And it's also, that is 3.5 ohms. And then I can turn... The impedance dial to get to the lowest point it is so fast and so easy to work with i mean it's still really really useful today <laughs> I, I did not expect i should say this but that is just a fantastic instrument and the way that these uh, indicators work and all that i'm i'm really uh, yeah i'm really happy about that So you can see what happens because I am in L. See, then they do like that, right? Isn't that fascinating with the light? And then I go to C and then it's these two or over here. <laughs> oh, very useful with the indication. Here's my inductor once again. Let's try and compare it a little bit. The fun thing is this modern instrument here can't measure these values at low frequencies. So, I mean, this is old 1960 unit actually wins over that. Because, as you can see here, I need to crank up the frequency quite a lot to get my 7.5. And, of course, I got my 3.5 ohms. So, all that is uh, perfectly fine, this... And Doctor here is specially designed for higher frequencies with ferret uh, and all that kind of stuff. So I think that is all I wanted to show you guys today on this fantastic uh, Wayne Kerr component bridge. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.